four times i went to korea so by the end of six months i was having a big back pain so when i went to <laughs> india i had to go for a kerala ayurvedic treatment you can't go like a spring and come back <laughs> you have to stay there for a couple of couple of seconds uh, it's a night life is amazing night life how many mask how many toilet papers i have to carry on is a one thing i was a little bit disappointed there is a whole front counter are blocked by steel fans one of the korean barbecue we use hand hi guys this is jibili jj i'm half of the yuja and i'm other half i'm jacob today we want to talk about our culture shock that's right As you know, I'm from Korea and I'm from India. We got married 2019. We have been in a relationship since 2012. We want to talk about how our culture different and what he got to know about Korea for new and what I was shock in India when we travel each countries. Yeah. First of all, we will talk about what he was shocked in Korea yeah. and then I will talk about what I was shocked in India when I traveled to India. Yeah. I happened to travel to Korea 3 to 4 times. I was chasing after my that time she was not my wife. She was my girlfriend. So I went there as soon as I landed in Korea. It's a different world. Oh, you feel like fast moving economy, even the infrastructure, the transportation medical system everything is 10 out of 10 or oh, excellent the first cultural shock is the koreans they call their father address their father and mother as appa and amma and same way i also from south india from kerala as a malayali predominantly we call our parents appa and amma there's a big difference between north and south because north india they don't call their parents appa amma they call pitaji madaji oh really uh, pita uh, uh, mada uh, uh, or da- i don't know what they call but south especially in in kerala among the malayalis predominantly they call their parents appa, appa and amma so i was touched but at the same time i was shocked because i'm coming from a different different country and i've traveled almost 11 to 12 hours from a different country how come still they are calling the parents appa and amma even when my parents travel to india especially in kerala trivandrum in the airplane my parents were shocked because some kids call appa amma They thought that yeah, there are some Korean yeah. in the same airplane. That is a big experience for me. Malayalam came from Tamil. Tamil yeah. And Tamil and Korea has a relationship in the history background. We can talk about that topic in the future, but apparently Korean and Tamil language is over 1000 words are similar. Pronunciation are so similar. Also some desserts are similar the way they cook and taste as well. That is a really interesting fact that our culture are similar when we look at me and my wife yujong you can find a big difference in it that itself is a cultural shock for a lot of people <laughs> number two, two you have to bow down 90 degrees to elders you see a elder who's older to your age suppose if you're 20 years old 25 if you say somebody is above 25 hmm. you have to show respect can you please so you, that? You, you you get up and you <laughs> you get up and you you bow down <laughs> You bow down 90 90 degrees. You you have to full Super far. I think we are need of shirt. So uh, what you have to do is you have to bow down 90 degrees like this. When you say elder, that is the sign of respect. In Korea, you should wave hands to elders. That's yeah. very good. In Western culture, doesn't matter which age they are, you can still wave hands, say greeting or say goodbye. But in Korea, you have to bow down to two elders for showing respect. Yeah. In India, also we show respect, but not bowing down 90 degrees. In India, you do. Uh, we tell, Namaskaram, Namaskaram, Namaste. We don't call anybody by names. If they're older to you, they you let us. and the or my uncle or something you add with the names yep. there also you have to address them in a special way mm-hmm. uh, you have to respect them plus that is this is the utmost respect i've seen in around the world yeah. i think i've seen in korea the, the biggest respect friends they pay they show the respect for the elders especially towards the parents and uh, the grandparents and also the elder relatives it was very good experience for me uh, because each day i think i have to bow down almost couple of times maybe Uh, 10 15 times i would bow down yeah. four times i went to korea over the period of four times all together i stayed there, stayed there for six months all this time you have to bow down bow down so by the end of six months i was having a big back pain so when <laughs> i went to india i had to go for a kerala ayurvedic treatment almost a couple of days 
Uh, there is a for getting back massage uh, for the back massage that's a true story because especially you have to you can't just simply you can't go like a spring and come back <laughs> you have to stay there for a couple of couple of seconds uh, if you come like a spring it's okay but if you have to stay for a couple of seconds then come back again it's like you're doing exercise so go slow wait hold on for some some more time so hold some time and then you come back so like that you have to do respect and I have to be at my best behavior so my wife said you have to you know just be careful don't get up like, like a duck you, like a spring don't get up just slow and then get up slowly i got to stop yeah so that is the way so it is going like that so it's a big shock for me because i have never experienced so i knew that they show respect when i met her in melbourne that's the first time i met her 2012 i knew this is a respect they, but i have never experienced it personally it's a good ex- more over it's a cultural shock it is a good experience uh, especially yeah. for my back so wonderful ex- exercise you have to address like Anya so you it's also a sign of self discipline number 3 from australia one of my friend close friend introduced me to a korean drink it's called soju it's soju. a it's a korean rice wine it's only a small bottle it's only a maybe around 300 ml or 350 50 ml. ml but they have 20 depending on which brand you're drinking you have soju chamusel uh, jinro soju but predominantly the the alcohol content is between 17% to 20% Yeah, I heard this maximum it reaches like 40%. Yeah, 40%. More alcohol, than 40%. Which is produced from Andong, the one of the city. So it's basically from rice, it's rice wine. That is still and my And transparent, clear color. That's a green bottle so nobody will suspect that you're drinking alcohol. When I was in Melbourne, when I used to walk through the shopping mall, I used to drink this I used to hold this bottle and drink. Um, yeah. That is 10 years ago. 10 years so ago. at this time maybe most of people know what is soju. soju. But in Korea it's legal to drink on the street even at the park at the beach wherever you want to drink even on the street while you're walking or sitting down on the bench you can drink it is legal. Usually Korean university students are gather at the park drink and play some games and spend good time even during whole night that is a one of the biggest joy in campus life later i came to know that sojo is an essential part of your life because yeah. you after you work you go out with your boss you all the full team will go to the boss mm. they celebrate by drinking sojo and the other drinks called makoli so mak is mixing sojo and beer there is a special ratio if you mix sojo more or beer more you can't really get the same or right taste i know this drink from melbourne but when i reached korea it's a first hand experience you can see with your eyes it's a night life is amazing this life night life there's no cut off time only till 10 in the night or 12 in the night unlike other western countries korea got an amazing super night life 24 hours it's a party place it's a party city i really enjoyed it when i went to visit yujo i had a chance to meet with our friends and all our friends drink alcohol especially soju except yujo you used to drink soju in a shot glass and then you put soju in a like same way you drink tequila you put soju and then you put cheers and then you drink one shot but he used to give us company so yujo used to put in the shot glass he used to put plain water She used to give us company. My uh, spirit is I can chill out with the people with the drunk spirit. So after you have, uh, after I have around seven or eight shots of soju, and then when Yujong comes and gives cheers to me, in my subconscious mind, not conscious but subconscious mind, I think that she is also drinking with me. You know, it's a big uh, shock for me because I had a tough time drinking with one of her friend called uh, H. I can't tell her name, Miss H, and we used to call her Soju Machine. She used to drink. told you like plain water me and her we are we are drinking couple of bottles and i was completely black out you know just i have my sense i know where i'm sitting but i was gone so that is the experience and when you look around you can see everybody is enjoying you know because so so just a part of life korea the population is around 52 million people can you believe soju is the most consumed alcohol one of the most exported alcohol from korea to other parts of the world how many bottles uh, so one a uh, one day in korea the full south korean as a nation they drink more than 7 million bottles a day 7 more than not 7 but more than 7 million bottles a day a day a day so that means you can imagine see there are population is 52 million yeah okay new zealand population is only 5 million, 5 million yeah. so they they consume more than 7 million bottles and other thing is soju and beer and everything it's available in 24 hours convenience store Canyon store is like op- they open 24 hours like 7 Eleven and all that. Yeah. So you can you imagine that is available in those stores but they won't sell if they think that you're underage. They will ask for an <laughs> ID. They won't they won't they won't sell if it's if you if they think that you're underage. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 
you can get and they sell for $1 or $2. 3 uh, US three, dollars. 3 US dollars. 3 to 4 US dollars. That'll be around 5 to 6 New Zealand dollars, 280 rupees. That's for a bottle. They export all. They're selling here in New Zealand for almost $10, mm. $11. So you have to hold your ID to buy either cigarette or any alcohol. Yeah. You can buy from convenience store 24-7. 20, in you India, can, you, you won't shut be down 10 o'clock, right? No, no. It's, it's, they will be shut down before 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But you can still you can buy from the bus, but it will be very expensive. But I've never seen any convenience shop selling alcohol that means that is how much responsible drinking you told me one of the culture shock is in india don't have any food when you're drinking no alcohol, no in, right? in indian girls especially from south india from kerala what we do is we, we just boost up we just drink we just have some touching like cashew nuts or maybe fish fry some fries or some nut maybe tomato some fruits or some vegetables mm. you'll be drinking first and then you'll be eating which i found no good for the body that also is a big shock for me because when i went to korea i can see our friends they eating food first so i asked you jung why are they eating food? Because they have to drink first and they eat. She said, no. Here in Korea, we eat first. We make sure that we eat well and then we go out for drinking. And also at the same time, you can drink and eat food. And eat food. Especially when you drink spicy soup, hot stew are really good for hangover. We are drinking at the same time, we order some soup so that it goes together and fill your tummy. Yeah. She made a big impact in my life. So when I eat food, and then I drink, I feel all right. Much better, huh? Much better. But if I don't eat food and if I drink, the next day is gone because mm. you'll be having a terrible headache and hangover. But after I met Yu Jong, here and there there's a big changes. I'm not telling alcohol is good for the body, but if responsible drinking is it's okay, then yes. it's okay. These are the shocks, a couple of cultural shock I can remember. The first shock, the kids calling their father, mother, appa, amma. Second shock was bowing down 90 degrees. Those show two elders. Because only in mathematics, you know how to do 90 degrees. <laughs> Third one being sojo, the wonder alcohol of South Korea. How much bottles they, they drink every day. What makes the drink so special? It's time to talk about what I was shocked in India when I traveled to India. The biggest shock is he was dating an Indian Indian person. That is the biggest shock. Yes. So that's number one shock for, for everybody. In 2016, I had a chance to travel to India. At that time, first of all, I asked him how many masks I have to bring to India. Yes. So on the phone, to souvenir your phone. How many masks do I have to pack? So it's a, one of the misconceptions a lot of foreigners have is India. There are bad air pollution everywhere. We can understand Delhi, New Delhi, the, some part of the India has air pollution is bad air quality due to the factory but there are many places which has really clear good air quality there is less air pollution i didn't need any mask during travel in india right mm. i was on the phone with subhiyampa subhiyampa and said why do you need to because mask? if it's a precaution it doesn't matter you will never know which all parts of india you travel now during the pandemic everywhere around the world yeah. you have to wear masks, wear masks. So, That's compulsory. So if, if she had saved a couple of masks that time, we, we could have done a business. Second, what I was shocked in India, I told you I had to travel to India. That same phone call, the next question was, how many toilet papers I have to carry on? Because I thought that there is no toilet papers to sell in India. Yeah. I heard they're using hand and wash and they're not using toilet paper at all. There is a misconception that there is no toilet paper in India. Notice there are toilet papers in India. They sell in a store like a retail shop. As soon as you get inside the airport, there are toilets. They display toilet papers in the toilet booth. At the same time, I was shocked that there is toilet handheld shower hat that was amazing i thought that is really hygiene but if there are soap on the side of the booth then i can use soap and water at the same time that is the one thing i was a little bit disappointed that only there is a water but i was happy that there is toilet papers for foreigners or people who want to use at the same time there is a shower head it is hygiene as well i highly recommend it to use that i will write a letter to the government of india uh, putting your suggestion i think now they must have changed she is chilling yeah. from uh, 2016 that is almost five years back if anybody knows that soap are displayed then please leave the comment so that we can realize that there is a lot of difference between the 2016 and 2022 mm -hmm. third one which i was shocked is Look. liquor shop yeah. what i thought i thought third one <laughs> she's talking is looking into my face 
the liquor shop. Do you know there are two different floors, two different kinds of liquor shops in India. When I went to India, it was alongside the beach, next to the beach. He told me that I'm gonna buy alcohol from liquor shop and come back. I was in shock because there are so many queues on the ground floor of the liquor shop and they have still fans like a grill to protect themselves. So long queue. Oh my god, I thought that how many minutes I have to wait for. And within five minutes, he came back. So I asked, how did you buy so quick? I thought I have I told, to wait I, for 30 minutes. I told it's magic. Yeah, he told me it's magic. And he explained to me there are two different stories. Downstairs, they sell local alcohol, which is very cheap. It's not very expensive. They only sell to XM mm -hmm. only. 500, 600 rupees. Yeah. And there are first floor, the second one, which is alcohol, which is imported from overseas. If you go to the second floor, compared to the first floor, the price will be expensive. Why? Because the brands are very popular brands like Chivas, Scotch, Bacardi, Bacardi White Rum, Brandy, Jameson, Irish Whiskey. All these brands are a bit expensive. I was shocked that there's two different stories or two different kinds of liquor shop. Downstairs liquor shop, there is a front counter, a lot by steel fans, only small windows. Like Pigeon, so pigeon hole is there, yeah. So that you can pay the money. Background is whole war is fulfilled with alcohol, so that people can see what kind of alcohol they mm. have and, and they, they can order. order. So it's a different experience for you, John. Mm. Yeah, and there right. are security guard in upstairs because there's whole security also on the top and also mm. down because. Even though you tell all this pricey alcohol on the top, yeah. sometimes the people might go barge in mm. when they get drunk. I asked him, why do they need that kind of grill of steel fans? It looks like prison, like a jail. It's for the safety. Yeah, but it's for the safety, safety and so also I the understand. Both sides, uh, financial safety and also the safety, the for, safety the for the employees. The employees. Well, because people are, you know, you, you might behave differently. You know? Yeah. And what time do they close usually? They close around maybe 9.30, sometimes by 10. And in India, they can't drink alcohol on the street. Yeah, yeah. It's we, Legal. Illegal, and in legal. Korea we can drink. It's legal. My suggestion to subscribers is just a joke. If you win a tax lotto, if you win a lottery, and if you want to drink alcohol, just take a flight, go to Korea, <laughs> and drink as much as you want to drink, and come back. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. In Korea, there is no liquor shop, liquor liquor shop. Yeah. They don't have any particular retail shop which only sell alcohol. So, in Korea, you can get alcohol from any places like a supermarket, convenience store, restaurant. That's a good observation from mm. Yujang because personally, I've never seen any liquor shop. It's a very good observation. See, when you have very intelligent wife, who, even though she doesn't drink alcohol, she knows. Come on. They drink in a social way. Like she said, they have food. And chat, chat. play games. Yeah. So they have a sip by sip, they spend 2-3 hours and talk with their friends. Same like you drink coffee. It's a good kind of uh, difference. Number 4, what I was shocked in India is having food with hands. I already knew he is having food with his hand from Australia since I have met him. But what I was shocked is, it's a misconception. Another misconception from foreign countries. People think that Indian people use only right hand for having food. There are left-handed people who use left hand to have meal. Please don't say that Indian right hand use for having food, left hand use for yeah. some other thing. They could be all around. Some people think that there is dirty to have food with hands but i don't think like that because in korea also we have some we call some there is uh, fancy lettuce or Romanian lettuce parilla leaf pork garlic onion dipping sauce ah amazing taste one of the korean barbecue we use hand and when we have kimchi we tear sometimes we use the chopsticks but most time, as soon as we make kimchi, new fresh kimchi, you have to tear with two hands right. and then having with meat. That is unbelievable awesome. taste. We use hand too. And when you have rice cake, we use hand. When we have bread, we use hand. Right. So it is not about having meal with hand. It's Dirty or having meal with hands are happen only in India. A lot of mine and Yujong's common friends, even here also from North India, they were eating with spoon. I thought all Indians are having food with hands. We were invited to one of our friends' friend, house. She's not Indian, but she her forefathers from India. And this other friend, she's from Punjab, and they both of them they be eating with yeah. pork and spoon, and then she was shocked because they're from India. I asked them, "Are you not from India? Why you don't eat with your hands?" 
and they say no we never eaten with the hands from the childhood we only use spoon and fork that was a culture shock to me as well because foreigners think that all Indians are having meal with hands that is wrong some part of India some families they don't use hand while they're having food at all it is a good experience for me and Yujong which are part of the world you go we have yeah. our similarities there and also we have the difference the cultural differences but under god's face we are all one for today's video we just wanted to highlight few of the cultural differences or cultural yeah. shocks we faced that's a big list if we talk about the full list then we will be sitting here 24 hours if you are interested in about our culture difference video or culture shocking video please leave the comments and like our video and subscribe our channel please request us so that we can take a next video yeah. with the same topic and also share the videos to your friends and families so that they also know more about the intercultural experiences we faced in our life and which we will be facing in the future also which is a good experience because my last dream i never ever thought that i'll be marrying a korean a girl doesn't matter from which country you're getting married all the main thing is you have to treat your other half in a very good way we have to love each other we have to care for each other and we have to respect each other. We hope you enjoyed a lot. Please leave the comments how you felt and what you knew before and what you didn't know before. Thanks for watching. This is Jubilee JJ. I'm a half of Jay Yujong. Uh, I'm other half Jacob. Take care. Be safe. Be safe. Have a blessed week. See you See. next video. Bye. Bye. Crazy about you. Crazy about you